Hello everyone, it's Corp, and we are taking another dive into Zomboid. Today I wanted to give a small but effective beginner's guide to the Project Zomboid Needs system. In Zomboid, you'll come to realize very quickly how much of the basics of life that you'll require to stay alive. You're gonna need to keep stocked up on food, water, get plenty of rest, and have shelter over your head, while also battling stress and anxiety to keep relatively healthy and happy. If the zombies don't kill you, then heat, cold, food, thirst, or even your own mind will. On screen will be relevant statistics and timers for death if they apply. Feel free to pause the video to read them. The timers are accurate, give or take around 20 in-game minutes. Now, let's start the video proper. Let's start with the most pressing of concerns and work our way through. First will be thirst. This is going to deplete the fastest, but it's also one of the easiest to keep on top of, at least while the water is on. If you don't drink plenty of liquids, you'll start to suffer more and more severe effects, up to and including death. So be sure to keep a bottle of water or some other liquid on you at all times, and keep it topped up. Water is on at the start of the game, but it can shut off at any time. And once that happens, you'll quickly deplete the water left in the pipes. Now, you'll have to be on the search for either new pipes to drain, water coolers that have a large supply of water before they're depleted, locating a well, which has an infinite source of water but there aren't many of them in the game, or creating rain collector bales and praying to the gods you get some water. Now, let's discuss this last one a little bit more in depth. A collector bale comes in two sizes and has two purposes. When inside, it'll act as a storage vessel for clean drinking water, and when outside it'll collect rainwater, which when boiled becomes safe to drink and cook with. Your next pressing concern is gonna be food. You can survive a few days without food, but you'll start losing weight and you'll slowly but surely face more severe effects just like with thirst. If your weight drops too low, you'll also start to lose strength, fitness, pick up negative perks such as out of shape, and even eventually die when you hit 35 kilograms as your body starts wasting away to nothing, unless you can quickly turn around the weight loss. The opposite is also true though. While being overweight is not nearly as fatal by itself, many of the effects are. If you're too heavy, your endurance will give out quickly, you won't be able to run nor fight nearly as long, and the worst detriment of all is the fact you cannot scale high fences at all, which can drastically cut your options in a fight or flight situation, leaving your fat ass as an all-you-can-eat zombie buffet. Now, as for satisfying this need, there is a variety of options at your disposal, though. The first and most obvious is scavenging. You'll have to scavenge for food, especially in the early game before you build up any of your skills. Searching homes, restaurants, hotels, and schools can all be excellent sources of food, especially if you see a boarded up survivor home. These homes, while chock full of zombies, are often chock full of weapons and non-perishables as well. Once you've scavenged enough basics to survive, however, you'll need to turn your focus on the long term. The power will also eventually fail, thus making anything perishable worthless in a matter of days. And as such, you'll have to turn to the other methods of securing food. The next most readily available source of food, at least in the early term, is foraging. Using the foraging skill, you can scavenge the woods for sources of delicious berries. Though be careful, if you aren't an herbalist or have read the magazine, you take a risk of poisoning yourself. Which, while not too bad if you only eat 
one or two, a large pile of them will kill you. Another downside of foraging is as the weather turns cold, the sources of berries will dry up, and you won't be able to get any until spring rolls around. Now for one of the most sustainable sources of food, fishing. If you fish, is determined where you are on the map. You will need to be either near one of the map's lakes, or using the Ohio River as your source of fish. If you're in one of the more landlocked regions on the map, you'll need to consider either moving bases or giving up on fishing entirely. Fishing is a great source of food though. Reliable, even in the cold of winter, though less effective. To fish, you'll need two things, a fishing rod and bait. You can either use foraging to craft a rod using sticks, twine, and fishing line, and a paper clip to act as the hook, or scavenge garages and hardware centers for these precious resources. Bait can be gathered in four ways, digging the earth for worms, using a net trap to catch bait fish, foraging the woods for bait animals like insects, or using a pre-made fishing tackle. No matter what you choose to do, once you've got your rod and your bait, you're ready to begin fishing. Now the next source of delicious noms is gonna be the slowest, but potentially the highest yielding, that being farming. Farming is a slow, tedious way of making food, but it's also very much a set it and forget it. Keep it watered and monitor it for disease so it doesn't wither and die, and you you're good. Each crop has a set amount of time it takes to grow, and once harvested, it'll start the normal process for fresh fruit. Now something I have been saving is canning. This goes hand in hand with farming. Get a hold of jars, lids, and vinegar, and you can preserve the fruit of your labor, making it so your fresh fruit won't go bad on you. Now the next form of food gathering is trapping. Hunting small animals using traps and bait. Using the trapping skill, you can make wooden traps that'll capture woodland creatures ready to be gutted and butchered and eaten. This can be finicky, however. It has to be done in the woodland, away from the both zombies and players. A player has to be at least 75 tiles away according to the wiki, or else animals will not enter the trap. Be sure to check your trap often, however, as it can go off without capturing anything or breaking. The final and most desperate measure for survival, and this will nuke your mental health, so only resort to this in desperate situation is eating insects. You could forage in the woods or even dig the earth for worms to eat. It'll keep you alive, but you'll suffer for it. Another thing to keep in mind is cooking. Many foods require being cooked to be safe for consumption. During the early game, this is easy while there's power. You can rely on the ovens. But once the power runs out, you either need a generator to run your oven, an antique oven that burns wood or fuel, or one of two types of grills, that being a charcoal or propane, which both require their own source of fuel, as well as campfires. So keep this in mind for late term survival. Next in the hierarchy is sleep. Sleep is vital. Get too tired and your character becomes worthless. They'll miss their attacks constantly. Their critical hit chance goes down drastically. They'll take forever to finish off a zombie. And as the exhaustion climbs higher and higher, your vision will dim and darken. You'll be much more susceptible to attack, less likely to fend off a grab, or even see it coming. And your exertion from combat or running will not fade. The flip side, however, is this is one of the easiest needs to fulfill. All you need to do is sleep. Anywhere will restore your exhaustion, even the cold hard ground if need be. That being said, you'll want to find a bed or at least a couch if you can. While sleeping on hard surfaces will reduce your tiredness, you'll often wake up in pain and be tired quicker, especially if you do it repeatedly, thus for a time making you less effective. Be warned however, Pick where you sleep carefully. The world does not stop because you decide to take a nap. The hordes are ever restless, and if given an opportunity, will break into your house and potentially even jump you in your sleep. For this, I recommend sleeping on a second floor if possible. And be sure to close the door, even barricade it, if you feel the rest of your house is not secure. Another factor to keep in mind, I will discuss this more later, is mental state. If you're depressed or in a state of anxiety, you have a chance to suffer nightmares which will cause your character to be startled awake in a state of very strong panic, which not only disrupts your sleep, but makes you much less effective if you're under attack as well. 
Next in the hierarchy of needs is shelter. Shelter comes in many forms, be it a small tent or a cabin in the middle of the woods, or the top floor of a tall office complex. Whatever gives you protection for the hordes and elements is good. There is a variety of factors to take into consideration when making or taking a shelter though. Location, size, hordes, defendability, and potential sources of heat. Let's start with locations. There's many things that can make something safe. Is it remote from the zombies? Or maybe it's a high up location with only one staircase leading in, allowing for it to be blocked off or even destroyed entirely and utilizing rope ladders to get in and out. What matters in the moment is how much do you need to do to get it defensible. A one story house or a strip mall in the middle of a densely populated area is most likely a bad call. However, a one story building in the remote countryside like a log cabin, preferably one with a well, now that makes for an excellent shelter. The remote nature makes it highly defendable because you shouldn't get more than the occasional straggler. Size is another important factor. Does it have enough space for you or you and your allies? Too small and you'll run into issues with storage or security, but too large and it'll be too much ground for one person to reasonably cover. A hotel being a good example of too large. There is far too many windows and entrances that need to be walled and barricaded off to keep the hordes from flowing in. And hotels also tend to be located in population centers, making them spawning grounds. Hordes is a fairly obvious one. How many zombies are in the area? Is it small groups, one or two off in their own scattered, or is it large roaming packs? Consider how many zombies are in the area before you attempt to take it as your own and how much work you'll need to put into clearing and defending it. The next factor is defendability. As a rule of thumb, the more ground floor windows it has, the worse off it is. Places like stores and spiffo burgers and such make for great looting areas, but terrible bases due to the sheer amount of entrances there is, and the amount of resources it'll take to lock down every window and door. There's a few exceptions to this littered around the map, however. There are spiffo burgers or gas stations that have apartment style homes on the top floor. If you could break or barricade the stairs and use rope ladders, these become excellent base of operations in a hectic city environment. The final factor is a long term one primarily. Is there a solid source of heat for when the power goes out? A place that has a fireplace or antique oven is essential for surviving the cold harsh winter and for cooking when power runs out. The next thing I'd like to discuss is the elements. Nature will constantly be against you. Summer you'll be sweating. You'll consume additional water due to the heat. The rain and wind will chill you to the bone. Stay out too long and you'll risk catching a cold. Catch a cold and your chances for stealth go out the window. Winter will freeze you dead and if it doesn't kill you and instead only blight you with a cold, then the hordes of undead that heard your sneeze will do it for mother nature. You can counteract rain with jackets and coats to some degree, but stay Stay out too long in heavy rain and eventually it will soak through. You can use towels to dry off though and keep from getting sick as easily. The final thing for overall survival you'll have to keep in mind is your mental state. Your mental state will affect everything you do. Get too sad and you'll fight less effectively. You'll recover slower. You'll suffer night terrors you'll panic easily. But fret not, there's a variety of ways to counteract these ill effects. You could turn to healthy outlets, a nice home cooked meal, maybe chow down on a pleasant book, maybe indulge in a comic, a newspaper, or a magazine. Or you could turn to a life of vice. They'll be warned that vices do have their own detriments. You could pick up a pack of smokes, that'll drop your stress and anxiety well, but rely on it too often and you'll pick up the smoker trait. Then you'll f be forced to smoke at least once a day to keep your anxiety and stress from rising as you face withdrawals. You could turn to alcohol, which while currently not addicting and can be very beneficial, it drops your stress, anxiety, boost happiness, and for an underweight character can be a godsend in the form of calories to bolster your weight, but you'll also suffer from a lot of the negative effects of booze. You'll slip, you'll stagger, you will fall down. I've had characters try to run from a horde drunk just to fall face first.
first to be devoured before he could stand. Another thing that relates to mental state is boredom. Boredom is just as much of a killer as anxiety. Become too bored and your character will start to slip into depression. If you think you'll get to this situation, then keep an eye out for a bottle of antidepressants. They act as a slow, long-term boost to happiness that can counteract the effects of boredom and other depressing actions. Illness can also affect your mental state. If a wound becomes infected, it can lead to illness, and illness will increase stress, causing you to become more nervous and depressed if untreated or if it looks like it's gonna go badly. Keep in mind, while a mental state will not kill you directly, they drastically lower survival chances in many situations. I hope this has been a good and thorough guide to learning some of the basics of survival. Hopefully now you'll be able to satisfy the basic needs of your character as you fight and claw your way towards those late game skills. I will also be putting out further Zomboid content, maybe like character creation, giving some tips and helping to understand what many of the traits and professions do, as well as the actual character model creator, might do some challenge runs, stuff like that. Let me know what you think I should do down below. This has been Core. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Maybe comment what you liked. Have a good one.